I was given this cool can of craft vodka. The booze was good, but the can itself has definite potential as a storage tank. So a little look around for inspiration and what do we get? Maybe just on its side and all rusty. I haven't played with rust yet. I like my brushed steel aesthetic, so maybe not this one. In a frame that I could make out of old sprues. That could be fun. Maybe all steampunk looking. I do like playing with those half beads as rivets. Or maybe upright and on a frame platform. Again, a good way to use a bunch of sprues. Maybe make it a bigger model and create some sort of railroad trolley for it to rest upon. Or just nice and simple, standing up. But in the end, I liked this one. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just an obstacle, but could be a vantage point upon which to station troops, like the choke station, but a little more compact in nature. The trusty Emma's townhouse supplied the bits I needed to create the platform that would be on top. Two of them placed side by side would create a platform rather than the catwalks I've made on the other items of terrain. And also, there was a nice big square base upon which to mount the entire piece. Also, a trio of pipes from my big old bag of pipes rising up and accessing the tank. This might be nice on the sides. Okay, that's the basics sorted. First up, some wire cutters to snip off the snap tabs on the townhouse pieces. And then, with a knife, I trimmed them down and made the ends nice and smooth. Now, to make the structures upon which the tank will rest. I grabbed some foam core and cut out two rectangles. I dropped the can onto it and ran a pen along the base to mark out the region to cut away and then cut out the semicircle in which the tank will reside. I placed the can in the grooves and just took a look to make sure it was at the right height so that the pipes would attach to the middle of the tank. And yes, a nice fit indeed. And now some cardboard strips that I can glue over the exposed interior of the foam core to hide that foam and some super glue to connect the two catwalk pieces together to create my platform. Of course, this isn't the strongest connection in the world. I wouldn't trust it long term, but I have a solution coming to reinforce them. Next, cutting out a rectangle of wire mesh to place and cover the platform and give me a nice floor coating. I wiped some super glue around and then dropped some off cuts of foam core onto it and then placed a candle on it as a weight to keep everything pressed down while it dried because the mesh tends to warp and buckle and then it doesn't glue flat. At each end I wanted some sort of curb to seal in the platform. So another couple of bits of foam core and again sealing them in with some cardboard strips to hide the foam. Ooh. That temptation to paint hazard striping is rising by the moment. I finished off the cardboard along the edges of the foam core cradles and then moved on to sprucing them up with rivets. For these rivets on the cradle, as usual, a bunch of Chenkao half beads. I selected some medium sized ones and dipped them in Elmer's and with tweezers started dropping them along the sides in nice rows. Okay, a quick assemble because I wondered about adding some of the snap panels vertically to the side of the base. But, hmm, not a fan. Never mind. I realized I hadn't sealed in the underside of the curbs, so added the cardboard. Okay, coming along nicely. Doesn't look too hideous. So... On, tab, on. I cut some cardboard strips and wrapped them around a solid plastic straw to get them into shape a little and then glued them onto the pipes and wrapped an elastic band around to hold the strips of cardboard in place to create a series of additional bands just to break up the long smooth blank surfaces. Speaking of blank surfaces, I wanted to spruce up the cradle a little. A few cocktail sticks with one pointy end snipped off and then glued vertically into place. I'll trim them to size once they are dry. Okay, some more beads on the piping bands and I used the cross section piece from the bag to hold them upright so they can dry in peace and not look so blank. 
I cut out a bunch of little shapes from cardboard and chipboard and a few more cocktail sticks and just started gluing them here and there just to break up the smooth surfaces and create some more distinct textures. I took the wire cutters to the cocktail sticks, trimming them down and it is now time to assemble the main tank. I glued down the cradles and then added a line of hot glue along the semicircles. I added the can of vodka with the opening at the lowest point. Next up, hot gluing the L pipes into position as a row connecting to the side of the tank. Anywho, to help attach the platform to the tank, a few lollipop sticks cut to size with the wire cutters. If you have anyone else in the room when you do this, give them a heads up, as when you snip them off, they slingshot all over the place, ricocheting off of walls and furniture. I then glued the sticks across the bottom of the base, situating them where they won't clash with the ridged bands on the can. This means that the sticks are helping keep the two plastic townhouse pieces connected and also underneath there will be glued connection points to the can at the ridges and on the sticks. Then a nice line of hot glue along the top of the can and I dropped the platform into position slightly off to one side so that I could cut a couple of solid straws to size and add them as support stanchions on the overhanging lip. One of them I cut shorter after marking the height of a random simple plastic cap and cutting it away, just so they don't look symmetrical. So here we are. I added a couple of sections of wire mesh just for a bit more texture, but how exactly does one access the platform up top? I pondered trying to make a ladder, first using a strip of chicken wire between two thin lines of foam core, but it kept warping and didn't look right. I mean, look at this thing. Maybe there's a way to make it look right, but I have another idea to try first, so this is a quandary for another time. Okay, a wider strip of foam core. Place it against the base and then mark the height I need it to go to. After adding cardboard on the sides and a layer of wire mesh on top of that, just to give it some life, and then I dissected a line of staples with some pliers and then added them up the middle to represent rebar rungs. Some little dabs of Elmer's to help hold them in place seemed like a good idea at the time, but it actually became a problem later on. Anyways, I was making this particular piece of terrain over Christmas and took inspiration from this bit from one of my favorite Crimble movies. A batch of toxic waste from your clean textile plant. There's a whole lagoon of this crud in the back. That could have come from anywhere. So I want to add some glowing green crud, which I'll be creating from hot glue. Firing a few good blobs into the valve worked a treat. And the problem I had with the choke station, with the goop not reaching the ground to create the Chernobyl elephant's foot I was after, didn't matter here. And I got the hanging sludge ball I wanted with no problem. After blasting the entire structure with matte primer, I added a layer of moot green to the chemical seepage. While that dries, I started using Army Painter Mithril Silver to apply a nice dry brush over the entire structure to highlight the edges and give it the nice dark industrial look I like. Very brushed steel looking. There we go, looking good and coming along nicely. On the goop, I then added a nice generous layer of warp lightning, and now back to the problem. Oh no, the problem, the problem, and it started again. Oh, oh, don't worry, darling. Oh. I the Elmers I had used on the rebar rungs was a lot more distinct after priming than I liked. The cardboard is so smooth and flat that the Elmers is really distinct. So. Breaking out the Mod Podge and acrylic, I added a few layers, letting them dry totally between applications and dabbed with the big fat brush to build up a nice texture. Then I painted it black and gave it another dry brush of silver so that it matched the rest of the structure. There we go, much better. And finally, a few touches of Tesseract Glow on the sludge. And just because I never know when to just put the brush down and walk away, a few more applications of silver dry brushing to the main structure, and then I finally managed to stop myself by giving the whole thing a generous blast of Kamar varnish, and it stopped me adding any hazard striping. And here we have it, a can of vodka 
transformed. There's a callous planetary governor called Maximilian Shrek. He has this supposedly clean textile plant that has been hiding its noxious industrial byproducts from view by pumping the resulting toxic waste into various storage tanks to hide it away. This is one of them. The tank has been sitting here for some time, forgotten and forsaken, erased from the books, but the corrosive substance has started to eat through the main discharge valve and is starting to dribble out. It's only a matter of time until it fouls completely and the ooze escapes and causes a catastrophic and lethal spill.